Ian Fisher is here with me today. Thank you for your time. Well, you're welcome. Hope you had a good journey here. Yeah, yeah. It okay. was easy. Cool. Um, your album Nero was released in January. Uh, this time you're all on your own. Uh, no present, no two of tours, no Honig, all the guys. How do you feel about doing an album just by yourself and, and for yourself? Um, and how did you make the decision for a solo album? Yeah, I mean, I've never really done anything just by myself. There were a lot of people involved in this album. And really the only thing that changed um, between this album and the albums that I released before was the name, essentially. Because for the last few years, um, I've performed as Ian Fisher in the present and the future and the past and all this bullshit. And it was always just really confusing. No one really understood. In, in, in the beginning, it was so that like, I could play with these different groups of people and there would be a different title for the different sounds that we would create. But no one ever really got it. I never really got it. And so, <laughs> yeah, I decided to just go back to my name. And it's just easier for people to understand. And there's more consistency somehow um, when someone talks about Ian Fisher in the present or Ian Fisher in the future or whatever. It seemed to mm. contradict each other. And uh, <laughs> speaking of, yeah. um, no, and. Yeah, it feels like now there's just more consistency. Mm -hmm. Is it a different kind of tension or pressure to do an, an, an no. album alone? No, no, no. I mean, I, I didn't do this album alone. I mean, of course, all the songs were mine, but there were a lot of people involved who were also parts of the past and present and future. And, yeah, and also in another band that I played in called Junior. And there are people in the band now that are in a different band that I played with called The Nowhere Train. I mean, it's really an organic process of a bunch of people who I've known for decades, <laughs> in some cases, uh, coming together and making this music with me. It would be a lie for me to say I did it on my own. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, you've been traveling Europe since you were 21. Still, your music and your voice have that significant, uh, significant country sound. Are you looking for your roots through your music? Yeah, somehow, somehow. Um, it's it's less looking for my roots, but more so embracing some of my roots um, that I wasn't proud of before. Like when I when I was back in the U.S., especially as a teenager, I associated this style of music with a whole subsect of American culture that I just didn't want to be a part of. And um, yeah, after moving away, moving to Europe, I, I was kind of able, as I think many immigrants are, to kind of create this patchwork identity um, and just kind of pick and choose elements of what it means to be an American um, and to leave behind things that I didn't like. So. I left behind a lot of political stuff and was able to pick out yeah, some of the cultural things that I like, like country music. Mm -hmm. And I'm super proud to come from a place where that music comes from as well. Um, so in turning back to country music, especially on this album more than any I did before, it's kind of like a, like a security blanket. Right? Okay. Yeah, kind of like a way to, yeah find a feeling of home wherever I'm at and um, yeah so does that answer your question yeah so <laughs> you, you don't you don't feel like you belong to a specific nation no I don't believe in the concept okay. I think I think that it's an extremely um, yeah yeah degenerative type of idea uh, that really is only there to yeah justify an imbalanced power structure. Mm. I mean, it comes essentially, like the, the modern concept of nation states essentially comes from the French Revolution. And it was initially put in place to make the masses think that they had the same interest as the rich. And that's still the case today. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that it's great to have culture. It's great to feel proud of where you're from, but that doesn't have to be tied together with this concept of being American or German or Japanese or Russian or anything. Like, you could be proud of being from Nuremberg, you could be proud of being from Missouri, but you don't need borders for that. You don't need, yeah, like militant xenophobia for that. Mm. Like, these elements of identity should be 
something that you could share with people and something that other people could come in and take part in. Like, I think, for, for example, today, like a Syrian refugee coming to uh, yeah, Bavaria, I think it would be beautiful if they could take part in like this really rich culture mm -hmm. of what it means to be Bavarian, like taking part in the, yeah, like the music and the food and everything. Um, and I think that it, it works both ways, like to also learn from these people and take part in their culture. Like that's how things grow. That's how new things come. And to be afraid of differences and xenophobic, like it's just going to lead to Armageddon. And you see these politicians that try to capitalize off the stupidity of people, whether it be Donald Trump or whether it be some fascist asshole from the F, uh, AFD. Like, these people are just trying to capitalize on these antiquated ideas of nationalism that are extremely dangerous and, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah really threaten the future, exist, like the future of the existence of our yeah, species. <laughs> um, do you have a cell phone with you right now? Yeah. Uh, could you describe your album Nero in three emotic emoticons? <laughs> could you do that for us? Oh man! Or could you at least try it? Oh, that's tough. Now let me scan my emoticons. <laughs> hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What's app? This might take a minute. Two hours later. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck it. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, your phone turned up. <laughs> oh, man. You live in Berlin and work with a lot of German musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it about Germany that caught you? Actually, Germany never really caught me. It was more Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, granted, I do travel around Germany a lot, and there's a lot of things that I like here. I have a ton of friends, and I've yeah played a million concerts here. Um, but yeah, it was Berlin that caught me. Um, I studied in Vienna for a while, and traveled around a lot while I was studying there, playing music, and yeah, got to know some guys in Berlin. Started playing music with them, and at the time, the city was super cheap, and I kind of got in the back of my head, and so I finished my studies in Vienna in 2009, and I moved back to the U.S. and tried living there for a while. I moved to New York for half a year, just mm -hmm. couldn't take it anymore, and yeah, I just couldn't afford it, okay. and it just killed me, not because of not being able to afford it, but it was just a very oppressive city. I loved the city, but I hated living there. Okay. And so, then, so, so. yeah, then I moved to Berlin uh, in 2010 because it seemed to offer a lot of opportunities to a young, poor artist. And I'm happy I did, but it was never really my city. Okay. I don't know. It was, yeah, I used it for what it was. Okay. And then kind of got out. You, you wrote a little hymn, hymn or, or anti-hymn about Berlin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ich habe nur einen Koffer in Berlin. Yeah. Um, what is in Ian Fischer's suitcase? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the suitcase that I had in Berlin when I wrote that, it was mostly clothes that I hadn't worn in about three years and still haven't. Like, it was just, I don't have much, really. Like, uh... Like right now, for example, we're on tour for, yeah, from the beginning of January to the end of April. Mm -hmm. And I have one bag, like one carry-on bag in my guitar with everything I need for nearly four months. So is it, is it kind of uh, cathartic to, to travel this light? I like it somehow. Yeah. Somehow it's meditative to be able to feel like you could fit everything you need in such a small space. Mm -hmm. And... It simplifies things. Like, you don't, you can't pick mm. like what you're gonna wear. Like, it picks you, mm -hmm. and you, yeah. It's just, I like that. I like not having many things holding me down. 
And I like being able to think that, yeah, if I wanted to, I could just fuck off and go somewhere on yeah. the other side of the planet without even having to think about it. Yeah. Um, granted, that comes with a lot of baggage, too. Like, it's very difficult to form um, lasting and normal uh, relationships with people. And, yeah, it involves a lot of traveling in this life. Mm -hmm. I've probably traveled more than... 15, maybe 20,000 kilometers this year already. This year already? Yeah. Yeah, like, it's really hardcore. And you, you have a lot of beautiful experiences and a lot of shitty experiences. Like, a lot of very short nights, a lot of inconveniences, um, never having privacy. Yeah, never silence. There's never silence, ever. God damn. Um, you collaborated with the past, the present, and the future. But some of these collaborations, collaborations were never released. How come? Uh, I didn't think that they were good enough at the time. Or I didn't have the money. Mm. I mean, I would have loved to release all of them. I released so many things. But, yeah, I just didn't have the money. And, so yeah, some... Sometimes I think too much and try to get all strategic and want to only release things in this time, this way, or with these, with this label or that label, and it was just, it just never happened. I don't know. Okay. Where does Ian Fisher live? In the past, in the present, or in the future? <sighs> Mostly in the past and the future. A lot in the future. Very seldomly in the present. Okay. <laughs>